Nutrition. It's a weird topic. Um, there's a, you know, the, the, the CrossFit message is a contrarian. It's, a, it's against the grain of, of, of uh, what ha is ha going on commercially in most facilities. They got machines, we detest them. Their isolation movements were compound. You know, big box, little box, low intensity, high intensity. You know, is everything about this message is uh, for, for many people um, uh, antithetical to all they thought they knew. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mindful. Now comes the nutrition thing, and it, it, there's not much relief here. It, the theme continues that what most everyone thinks is wrong. Um, in uh, July of 1989, in the Archives of Internal Medicine, and write it down, everybody, July 89, Archives of Internal Medicine. It's a peer-reviewed journal. A fellow by the name of Norman Kaplan wrote a piece that became dubbed the Deadly Quartet. And it was an absolutely breathtaking bit of research and analysis that has gone entirely, completely, absolutely unchallenged. That doesn't mean it's right either, by the way. But there's been no, no challenge to it. By the way, a dozen Nobel Prizes in total have been awarded now for cholesterol synthesis research. And Norman Kaplan will undoubtedly get a Nobel Prize for this work someday. And the impact continues to rip through the research and, and medical and clinical communities to this day. And what he was able to demonstrate by operative mechanism and through correlation, but more importantly, causally, causally, was able to show that hyperinsulinism was at the root of upper body obesity. And we now know all of obesity. That was just, that's what, what he was able to demonstrate uh, metabolically. Glucose intolerance, it's basically a quantifiable measure as to how close you are to becoming diabetic. If you are fully glucose intolerant, you need insulin. Hypertriglyceridemia, elevated triglycerides, hypertension, blood pressure high. And he was able to show that it was hyperinsulinism, too much insulin, that was at the cause of this. Now, what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas and you can't live without it. You got, you got a, a couple of choices. You can either produce insulin in the, through the pancreas, or you can inject it, you can take it orally, or you can die. You can't live without it. And what insulin does is it puts things into the cells. It has a counter-regulatory hormone, glucagon. It's a big story here. Don't worry if there's, some of this is swimming over you, because I'll make it easy for you in a, in a punchline at the end. That, that uh, anyone could wrap themselves around. But uh, glucagon is a counter-regulatory hormone. It lets things out of cells. And one of the things that insulin puts into cells is fat. Is fat. And insulin is the normal, essential response to the ingestion of, of carbohydrate if you're healthy. And so you can see now that the way to get your insulin level too high is to eat too much carbohydrate. Well, how much carbohydrate is that? In the qualitative sense, your insulin level is too high if it's driving up your blood pressure, making you fat, jacking up your triglycerides, or reducing your, uh, 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 affecting your uh, uh, ability to suppress blood sugar after, con after taking, uh, consuming sugar. If you are glucose intolerance, hypertensive, your triglycerides are too high, or your fat, you're getting too much insulin and thus too much carbohydrate. Just definitionally, that's the case, if you're concerned about your health. And what we recognize here is those total risk factors, markers for what? Heart disease, sudden death, myocardial infarct. And this is the process, by the way, by which we induce it is what we say atherogenic. It produces atherosclerotic disease. For us simple people, arteries paved over with plaque, which leads to thrombosis, occlusion, myocardial infarct, and death, and debilitation. But when physicians are polled, what is it, doc, that you don't want to get? Cancer and heart disease don't rank nearly so high, not by large margins, as does diabetes. You got to find a doctor that's really seen a lot of people dying, and what he's going to tell you is, I don't want diabetes. I can tell you how to get it. It's easy. You can get it, and I'm not talking about the juvenile onset, the type 1. I'm talking about the type 2. And in a problem, in type, in type 1, 
by reasons probably viral, the pancreas stops producing insulin. You're fucked. It happens to children. It's, it's horrible. It's sad. Type 2 diabetes, the one that grandma has, type 2 diabetes is caused by a receptor downgrade phenomenon. The blood, red blood cells, they have, a, they have a, a receptor site where insulin attaches. So the insulin molecule lands on this thing and it's got a funky little shape and the receptor has a matching funky little shape. It's a key lock kind of, kind of physical deal. And when insulin binds to the cell site, the cell can now receive all good things, including amino acids and fat. And if you expose yourself to too much insulin, pretty soon these cells and their receptors become blind to the, to the mechanism and the lock and key phenomenon doesn't work so well. It's a receptor downgrade phenomenon. And it's not really much different mechanically, the mechanism, than going out and staring at the sun. You stare at the sun, you're getting a whole bunch of light, right? You do it for a few minutes and later you'll never see any light again. You just burn out the receptors. That's what happens in type 2 diabetes. It's a, it's, a, it's a horrible, horrible thing. Now, what was revolutionary about this, and there is, there's no better way, word for it, none at all, is that it put this model in the trash can. And this was the old school way of looking at it. And what we used to say is that if a clinician would, I would, I would, I would see Tony as his doctor annually, and you're in perfect health, you're in perfect health, you're in perfect health. Well, you're up 10 pounds, but you're in perfect health. Next year, you're up 15 pounds, but you're in perfect health. Next year, you're up 20 pounds. And funky thing is, check this out, your cholesterol's really jumped up. It was up a little, but not like it's just, it just took a rapid jump. And not the good cholesterol, not the HDL, but the bad cholesterol, the LDL. And then a year or two later, I'm like, man, dude, your blood pressure's running away from you. And then ultimately, we either see death or glucose intolerance, you become diabetic. And the ordering was roughly obesity, then hypercholesterolemia, cholesterol go up, then the blood pressure goes up, then you become diabetic. And there was an assumption, an assumption, and it is a classical logical fallacy, that the ordering suggested causality, that because this happened first, then this, then this, then that, that this caused, ultimately, was the root cause of all of these things. This model is now understood to be fatally flawed. It was wrong. And we can even tell you what it is, a post hoc ergo propter hoc fallacy. After this, therefore, because of that. Order of events does not, does not necessitate causality. Do you understand that? It just doesn't work that way. And what Norman Kaplan was able to do was create a scientific understanding to demonstrate with powerful evidence that hyperinsulinism was indeed the cause of all these things and the cause of atherogenicity, at the root of atherogenicity, atherosclerotic disease, and, and, and cardiac death. All of this is collectively known as coronary heart disease, CHD, or Gerald Reven at Stanford University referred to it as Syndrome X. And there's been a very powerful reshift, re-understanding, and we're at the point right now, we really can't find anyone anymore worth a shit that doesn't know that what's causing heart disease is not dietary fat intake, but excessive consumption of carbohydrate. That's what's it cause. And things like the French paradox, they eat many times the, the fat that Americans do and have a, 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 a small percentage of the heart disease that we do. There's no paradox. The paradigm was flawed. They also consume almost just, just a little bit under 5% of the refined sugar we do. We're eating right now about 150 pounds of sugar per man, woman, and child annually. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> It's amazing what, what efforts will go to to consume uh, uh, sugar. For instance, I know you had that banana because it's got potassium in it, right? Isn't that right? Sure, didn't you? Was in it for the potassium and the quick energy? When's the last time you had kale or black beans? They have a lot more. I don't see anyone eating my black beans because I want to get potassium. No, they eat, you eat your banana to get the potassium because it's full of sugar and it jacks up your blood sugar and it makes you feel good. Your interest in carbohydrates, and it's profound, is really no different than your interest in beer or crack or opiates. It tickles the brain and it feels good. 
And the excuses we'll make, the shit that people come up with to get there, unbelievable. The things people will do to get to that high are phenomenal. Phenomenal. Now, I can tell you how to avoid all of that. You ready? Eat a diet of meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. Did you hear that there? And you're exempt. Magic. No problem. Meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar, no CHD. It's just that easy. Now, some have said, I've got physician uncles that, yes, but we have inherited the thrifty gene. And they're like, yeah, fuck you. It's got nothing to do with genetics. The genetic part is an intolerance to excessive amounts of carbohydrate. That's the genetic part. And it's really no different than having a pre genetic predisposition to alcoholism. Suppose you have the gene for alcoholism. Does that mean it will by necessity express? What do you have to do to make it express? Drink alcohol. If you don't drink alcohol, will you suffer from alcoholism? Probably not. At least none of the ma ma clinical manifestations of it. No different with atherosclerotic disease. I don't care what your grandfather died of, your mother died of, your uncle died of, your brother died of, like Barry Sears. All his uncles and father died, all of them at 49, from atherosclerotic-induced thrombosis, MI, myocardial infarct, heart, heart attack, all of them. He's not gonna. He's not eating the carbs they ate. Meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. It's also the paleo diet. Heard of that? If you, can't, if you couldn't have harvested it out of your garden or, 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 or farm and brought it in and eaten it an hour later, um, if, it, if it's not like that, it's not good. I'll give you another way to get to the right end point. Shop around the perimeter of the grocery store. Don't go down the aisles. I'll give you another easy way to eat. You want to get to the same end point. And these are all just models for effective nutritional uh, strategies for avoiding heart disease, death, and misery. Um, if it's got a food label on it, it's not food. You know, like how many grams of fat and, and, and you know, sodium and all that. If it's got that on it, it isn't food. Yeah. You don't see that on the chicken. It's not on the tomatoes. It's not on the apples. It's not on the corn. It's not on the pears. It's not on the asparagus. It's not on the Brussels sprouts. It's not, you get it? But it's on the Chips Ahoy and the fucking snack well and all the bullshit's got it on it. If it's got one of those little labels, don't eat it. And you won't have heart disease. Hey, if it's not perishable, if it says best if used before 2017, it's not food. It's some other bullshit. It might have started off once as corn somewhere, but it came out of the factory non-food and not good for you. Anyone stunned? I tell you, what, in 95, we were delivering almost the same lecture with just less clinical experience. And uh, there'd be people just like, oh, you're fucking kidding me. And, and, you know, and, and fat makes you fat, right? I mean, it just, that, that, doesn't that roll off the tongue nicely? It's not true. It's not true.